Republicans used to be. He's got the surface rights. He's been using it since 1877. It's his. The governor says, no, they've got a right to have their cattle there, but they don't care. They're not supposed to go in with these big machines and tear up the gravel roads all over the tens of millions of acres in this country, but they don't want you out there. They've already started tearing up roads 60 miles into the Arizona border, almost all the way up to Tucson and Phoenix, saying, don't go in here, it's not safe. The illegals just traipse around, burning down ranchers' houses, a dozen at a pop, they've had over a dozen homes burned in one night. And I'm just saying it's total lawless. If you're totally lawless, they just let you do whatever you want. If you're good and nice and friendly, they binge you over, folks. Let's go to Darren McBrain's report on the bracelets the Attorney General, the criminal, wants us all to wear to have guns. And the Homeland Security bracelets they want us to wear to fly on an airplane that have a taser built into them. Here's the report by Darren McBrain. Attorney General Eric Holder told a House Appropriations Subcommittee that his agency is looking into gun tracking bracelets to be mandatory for all gun owners. One of the technologies that the Department of Justice is looking at is a recent innovation that allows gun owners to only unlock a safe with a fingerprint scan and an RFID equipped bracelet. Others have even suggested that making GPS tracking and RFID chips mandatory for all registered firearms. Recently, Attorney General Eric Holder suggested that there be some kind of mandatory bracelet that gun owners wear, that only the registered gun owner would have access to that gun because he was uh, wearing a bracelet. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think that's that's good. I mean, especially if they're carrying it around um, and they have the bracelet on, then I guess people will be a little more comfortable um, knowing that this person has gone through the process in order to um, get the gun and it's extremely legal and things like that. That's genius. Whoever came up with that, that... It's good. I like that. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. That sounds like a good idea. It would stop a lot of the violence, obviously, I guess. I like that it idea a lot because I think that it would give people a lot more accountability to say like if you want to carry a concealed weapon you need to be able to own that and have people know that you're carrying it um, by uh, by showing them that you're carrying one. That's absolutely ridiculous and infringes your rights in ways that and I mean who decided that safety was more important than my personal liberty and ability to defend my own safety rather than entrusted in them where they're all the way in Washington making these policies that directly infect affect my lives in ways that they can't even know. If they're law-abiding citizens, you put it like a tracking bracelet on them. Or something. No, 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 no. More guns, less guns, what do you think? Old school ways, that's what's going to make the uh, streets better. What, what's old school? Back in the 1980s, <laughs> that's old school. Like an old-fashioned ass whooping? Yes, an old-fashioned ass whooping. All right, I'm, I'm with you there. I believe once we allow the government to start to track these individuals, it is abridging our, you know, implied rights to privacy that we may have in our constitution. However, I think there should be some sort of registration on every gun owner. Gun owner. Guns are for recreational purposes, and you know, more than one person is going to be wanting to use it. So, uh, now, okay, you said a key thing right there. You said it's for recreational purposes. What about and also for your safety and, and for, uh, you know, in case somebody breaks into your house. Uh, what about against a tyrannical government? Um, I mean, it's in the Constitution. It is in the Constitution, but, you know, I was written you know, 250 years ago. Uh, you see, you think it's a little outdated? I'd say it's a little outdated. Vice President Biden and I had um, a meeting with a group of technology people and talked about how um, guns can be made more safe by making them either through fingerprint identification, um, the gun talks to a, a bracelet or something that you might wear, um, how guns can be used only by the person who is uh, lawfully in um, possession of, of the weapon. So do you think Obama appointed the right man for the job as far as attorney general? I think so. It sounds like he's doing that's a good suggestion. He's at least thinking critically about the situation no. and trying to come up with other ideas. When to they put the explosives in OKC? Okay, the Fast and Furious guy? That's <laughs> the very same one. Is he the guy who, who did the, uh, the pardon at the end of Bill Clinton's uh, time on that guy that uh, basically bought his own way out of 
criminality. So it doesn't really surprise you that it's it's his brain behind all this? Not not one bit. That's genius. Whoever came up with that, that that's good. I like that. Nice way to end the report with a street banjo player. Great job, Darren McBreen. That's why I want to make McBreen go out and do reports. He's a great reporter. Worked for, what was it, Scripps Howard and a couple other big places doing national videos. Uh, and uh, he just is a great reporter. And he's an even better video editor in the concepts he comes up with. And, uh, you know, I, I want McBreen to go out and do one report a week. I mean, that is an absolute set deal for the news division that we send McBrain out once a week. And look, I made Daniels go out. Well, he was ready to do it and, be, and, and do a video report. He did a great job. All of you can do it. And that's what I've proven with this operation. I've hired people that have worked as professional reporters like John Bound, uh, who comes from a long line of journalist family. What well, his dad's a Peabody winner and, and John's done national radio and, 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 and reporting. He does a great job. We need, and I know Bound wants to do reports, but he's so busy. I haven't, I've kind of got project managers, but I haven't created actual designated managers yet because I've got a few main managers, but then everybody's just so busy working that I've got to just learn how to put people in charge of certain things. But John Bound does a great job on so many fronts. Everybody does. And then the guys behind the scenes here uh, who don't even want their names known that, that run the radio show, it's the most demanding part of this whole operation for three, four hours every day, super Super intense up here. I'm told that the mighty Drudge Report uh, had us top linked with a report. Armed federal agents surround farm. That's the free beacon. Forcibly remove cattle. Governor calls roundup intimidation. Blast First Amendment. Uh, the governor, family, wake up America. They are taking everything from us. Uh, so there's our story up on DrudgeReport.com. Standoff at Nevada Ranch. See Drudge. You wonder why the Pentagon watches Drudge, why the State Department watches it, why it's been declassified and come out in lawsuits. They surveil Matt Drudge. Matt Drudge is just an American who loves freedom, and he knows what important news is. A family surrounded with their kids getting beat up for being on the side of a state highway, filming 250 armed men with helicopters and armored vehicles, that's news. And now the rancher says if they get enough people there, they're going to peacefully march in to the pens and take the 300 cattle that have been stolen. And, you, you know, I don't think the feds, the, the feds are lined up with snipers aimed at people to intimidate. And quite frankly, I've been covering this since last week. It shows the power of Infowars.com. We first began covering it. Drudge picked up our stories. Not covering what mainstream tried to set and say was the agenda. Drudge said, oh, this is important. Picked it up. Local news starts covering it. Now, Sean Hannity, Glenn Beck, they're all covering it today. And then it'll be on Fox News, and then it'll be ABC News tomorrow. And they're going to end up being exposed to stealing these cattle. And you watch Congress will get involved. That's what we want. We don't want a shootout to happen. But I'm going to tell the Fed something. This is the type of thing. You end up shooting some old man, or you end up beating up a bunch of people. It's on, folks. Conservatives and libertarians... Don't go out and demonstrate. We don't attack police. We're law-abiding. You are becoming lawbreakers. You work for a corrupt government. <laughs> and people are sick of it. And let me tell you, out West, people are done being harassed by government. They're done. It's hard to live out West, but people are happy out there on average. And they're tired of being pushed around. And uh, the feds are buying all these weapons and they openly are training. I guess they just want to start something. That's why they're so arrogant and so aggressive. And what will they do once uh, this starts? They'll blow up a federal building, guaranteed, and try to blame it and say the, the militia blew up a federal building for Bundy. And it'll, they'll pick a federal building with a daycare center. Criminals do the same thing over and over again. And this Justice Department is headed up by the man, John P. Holdren, who was the deputy head of the Justice Department and ran the cover-up. We have the emails. You can look up. Uh, it was in the it was in the U Utah papers because the lawsuits out there that brought it out in federal court. The emails where he was like, "This is a D-Day level emergency. This is an emergency. I want our agents down there, and I want this shut down and covered up." And what were they covering up? Well, we know from the cops. Of course, they're cops and 
medical workers that first showed up are dead. But, but we know. And we know from Jane Graham, who was told she'd be basically whacked if she didn't shut up. She was there. She can name the federal agents. She would get exercise to take the stairwell through the maintenance hall to the ninth floor. She was in, in HUD, the head of our department. And she said it. She goes, the reason I recognize them is some of these guys were so good looking that I sat there and started talking to them. She's being an honest woman. A lot of these evil guys are good looking. The whole point is that she sat there and she recognized them later on the news. They were there with gray sticks of butter loading them in, folks. And McVeigh was there as well. They declared national security on those videos. All 18 of them. But two valiant FBI agents leaked the fact that those videos existed and they saw them to the LA Times. And both those guys ended up losing their job over it. Not everybody's bad in the FBI. Most of them, grassroots, are great people. It's all compartmentalized, folks. Stop being naive. And they, those FBI agents said they saw that video, folks, and six men got in and out of the rider truck and the other two cars. And we know who those men were. German intelligence, ATF, FBI counterterrorism. We know their names. You think it's fun to get up on air and talk about this? I'm risking my life to tell you this. So are the police officers we've had on here to tell you. Imagine being on that department where they killed cops and killed doctors and killed medical workers. And they'll still come on this show and talk about what they saw. Even after they've been told, shut up or you're dead. And I'm telling you, when the sagebrush rebellion starts, they're not going to let it be where they shoot some old timers and people start shooting back at the BLM. The minute that happens, if they let that happen, the revolution will spread against the global occupiers and will be righteous like 1775. And we will win, even a physical war. Very quickly, the military will go in, believe me, and the criminals will be removed at a certain level. There'll still be other challenges. The corruption doesn't set back in. The system's so endemic. And we could get the country back very, very quickly. The problem is the minute they're all ready with, with, with action plans, the minute they shoot some kid in the back like V for Vendetta, that's happened in Eastern Bloc countries, the secret police, that's based on true stories. The minute something like that happens, they're not going to let us have the moral high ground. We've held our fire. We've put up with being basically urinated on by the globalist. We've put up with every humiliation because we're smart and we know we're winning the info war. We're winning the moral high ground. We're waking up the military. We're waking up the police. We're waking up the FBI, the federal marshals, the state police, the, the, the bureaucrats, everybody. And so the system is totally freaked out right now. And the only thing they've got is false flag. But we're exposing that. There are false flags with Turkey and Saudi Arabia against Syria. All blew up now in New Yorker magazine. Cy Hirsch, we told you about it you know, six months ago when it was going on. But now it's mainstream news. The Navy SEALs said no to Dick Cheney's plan to blow up ships, uh, Navy SEAL ships, and uh, blame it on Iran. That's come out. All this stuff's coming out, and it doesn't work anymore. You, you, you could get away with this in the dark, but you can't get away with it when we know. And that's the great thing, is my mission's already succeeded. You could kill me tomorrow, and everybody already knows your game plan. And I can't believe that my radio show, researching this with other experts, became the fulcrum zero point, you know, the patient one point. They see us as a virus. Liberty is a virus. I'm patient number one. It, the spread really did start here. I cannot believe my life's fulfilled. I don't want to die. I want to live to be 150. I want to have see my great-grandkids. But I'm fulfilled. I've won. I'm satisfied. I've been a man. I've, I've, I've lifted dauntless the slughorn to my lips and blown. Child rolling to the dark tower came. I want to take your phone calls on this rancher and what's happening out there and what you think is going to happen and where you think this should go. Or you, have you been harassed by the BLM? Or maybe you got good stories about the BLM. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. I'm nobody special. But I could sit there with my kin and my ancestors who are honorable men and women, and I could be in their company. Well done, our son. Just want to be an honorable, good person. That's what fulfills you. That's what will take us to the stars and beyond. We're on the march. 
The Empire's on the